Hey everybody, Michelle here from Gardening with the Landscape Connection. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about perennials and specifically some of those unusual or not so usual perennials for the garden. When I first started gardening and landscaping 15 years ago, I didn't know what any of these plants were. I found them through trial and error and through ordering through my grower and came to love quite a few of them. So I thought I'd share them with you because maybe you've never heard of them or maybe I'm off my rocker and you know every one of these. But either way, it'll be fun and we're going to highlight seven. So let's go take a look. of you that are new here, let me just give you a little bit of background of who I am. I own a garden center and I am a retired landscaper, although I do still do design work for people on the side. I have been gardening my whole entire life. My father was the instrumental person that made me love gardening and I've been doing it since I was really super little. Now I've only been doing it professionally for about 15 years and I have really learned so much in those 15 years and the purpose of my channel is to share some of my knowledge with you so hopefully you can become better gardeners or just learn some things about gardening, especially if you're a beginner gardener. There are so many things that I wish I had known when I started. I don't have a degree. I'm self-taught all the way. I've learned from doing and I've learned from mistakes and I've learned from other people. So I want to share some of that with you today and we are going to talk about these really super fabulous perennials and hopefully you'll find one that you can make your own and that you love and maybe you want to put in your own garden. Now I will preface by saying some of these you're going to have a hard time finding. So we will be offering these for sale but not until May. I want to make sure that my grower has them available before I say hey we're going to be able to ship these out and you're going to be able to get them if you want to try them. So watch for that to come up in May. I'll make them all available for sale. Uh, some of them are only available through my grower, who I use a lot, and that's Hoffy Nursery. And you'll see them highlighted along the bottom of the a lot of the pictures that I have because they came from their nursery. And I have been using them for a long time to... Uh, get perennials from for not only selling perennials and growing with perennials and landscaping with perennials, but they seriously are some great experts and uh, advice people for me to go to when I want knowledge and information about different things. So let's talk about the seven that I picked that are just a little bit unusual and hopefully you'll find one you love. So I want to dedicate this video to Kelly M3363 who gave me the suggestion to do more videos like this way back at the beginning of January when I said, hey, what kind of videos do you guys want to see? And one of the ones she listed was making head videos of different lists of different perennials. And so then I just kind of took that and went in the direction that I'm going in. And so thank you, Kelly, for your suggestion. It was wonderful. The first one we're going to talk about is Estrancia Major or Master Word. I love these. and I'm going to talk about three varieties. These are great ground covers or they're really good just in the garden by themselves. You uh, probably want to plant three to five of these together because they do have smaller flowers on them, but the foliage on them is fabulous. They're deer and rabbit resistant and they grow in part sun or full sun and that's nice so if you have dappled shade that's when they like it the most and morning sun is fabulous for these and you could probably use these as a ground cover because once the flowers are done and you cut them off the foliage that's left is fabulous two of them that I'm going to show you have variegated foliage that's fabulous I just love it this cultivar that I'm showing you here is the masterpiece and it was actually discovered by Hoffy Nursery and they are the ones that cultivated and trialed it and now they sell it they trialed it for years before they put it out on the market and it is really super hardy and super dependable but look at the leaves on that those deeply lobed leaves with that green margin and then that inside center is like this glowing chartreuse absolutely gorgeous Check out these pale pink flowers that come up above the foliage. Aren't those great? These are coming out in June and July, and it really makes the whole thing look absolutely fabulous. You're going to deadhead those off when they're done because they aren't the most attractive thing when it's done blooming. And then if you do do it as a ground cover, you're left with this great foliage. This is really good in the front of a border. You can do it in a container. It does attract butterflies. So this is a really really nice perennial if you're looking for something a little unusual. My next Estrancia is Vanilla Gorilla. I love the name of this one, but if you're looking for one that has more of that sagey green with the white edge, the foliage on this one is great. Now, I think when this one is in the shade, it really brightens things up, and it does have a silvery blue hue to it, and I really like that about it. When the flowers come up above it, they are a pale pink, which is really super pretty. They are a nice combination together. 
Now, the estrangia, if you cut back the flowers, you are going to get a second flush of blooms, but they're going to be a little bit lighter when they bloom as far as how many you get, but you're still going to get that little bit of a second show. The other thing that's really nice is for a shade plant, this thing is super tidy, super neat, and I think that you would be happy if you planted it. During cool weather, you'll actually get some pink highlights on the margins of your leaves, and that's a little bonus as well. The next cultivar is called Venice, and it's got really strong stems. These flowers make me think of pin cushion flowers, but they bloom earlier than those. And they're absolutely gorgeous as a cut flower or a dried flower. Look at that beautiful red burgundy color. I just think that these are fabulous. Now, this one just has a green leaf on it, but it still has that deep lobing on the leaves. So, a strancha might be one to try. It's unusual, it's different, or at least I think it is. I didn't even know what it was until I bought one from the nursery because it was one I had never seen or grown, and then I fell in love. The first time I saw Euphorbia, I was like, oh my gosh, that is the coolest plant I've ever seen. And every year, my grower, who is Hoffie, they put out these really cool books. And they have all these beautiful color pictures in them and everything. And I'm always trying to test some different plants or grow something I've never grown before. So the first time I bought this, I put it in the ground. Oh my goodness, it was absolutely gorgeous. Now, I planted this one, which was the Blackbird, because I liked that dark foliage up against those beautiful flowers that are on it. And it probably croaked on me the next year and did not come back. So here in zone five, these guys are marginal. So unless you can actually find a microclimate to put these in, these are better suited for zone six through nine. But they're so gorgeous, I had to talk about them. And I've still planted them as a centerpiece in a pot. I did that a couple years and they were fabulous. But look at the foliage on that. Isn't that great? This cultivar gets these electric yellow flowers on it and paired up with that dark foliage, oh, it is spectacular. Now, it's blooming early in April and May, but then the foliage is left afterwards, and it still looks great. So, it's got a mounding habit, and it's got this really dark, velvety purple color, and in the sun, it actually darkens and gets darker. I mean, it's just, I think, a phenomenal, phenomenal plant, enough to make me almost want to move to zone six just so I can grow this. They are so awesome. They're deer and rabbit resistant. They grow in full sun. They're good as a cut flower. They're good as foliage. Absolutely great. Oh, check out the foliage on this bad boy. This is absolutely gorgeous. This one is called Ascot Rainbow. I have not planted this one, but I am going to, and I'm going to find a little microclimate to put this in to see if I can baby it and get it to come back. In the book, it says it has a zone five tolerance, but I put six on here because... I don't know. They are marginal at best, but maybe I can get it to come back for two or three years. Or maybe if I can find a microclimate, which is what I'm going to look for, I can get this thing to come back. So I'm going to try it. Now, a lot of people might think that Spurge spreads. These two cultivars do not. That is a different cultivar that like can take over your world. So be careful with Spurge that you don't get the one that spreads all over. I am talking about these two cultivars, and these are awesome. Now, this one is blooming in May and June, and the flowers on it, in this picture, doesn't do it justice. They are like this vivid red. So you've got this elongated leaf that's totally variegated with the chartreuse and the green, and then you've got the red popping out on it. Oh, this thing is beautiful. If you're looking for a totally fabulous companion plant to put with this, delphiniums planted behind this, ooh, they pop. They look so good. So if you want that color combination, that would look fabulous. And did I say that they're deer resistant? Well, if I didn't, they are. Do you want butterflies or hummingbirds in your garden? Grab a lichnus. Let's see if I can say this. Chalcedonica. Chalcedonica. I think that might be how you say it. But it is a catchfly or a Maltese cross. These guys are deer resistant. They grow in full sun or part shade. And if you're looking for that pop of red, ooh, this guy is beautiful. I don't know if a lot of people plant this one. So this is on my list. It's actually been around for a really long time, and it's what we call an old-fashioned favorite. But I didn't know about them until I saw them in the catalog, and I ordered them, and then I put them in my garden up at my other house, and they did fabulous. I loved these. They bloom in June and July, and as you can see, it's got a really super strong stem because the flower head itself is actually a decent size, but that stem is really strong, and it holds them nice and upright so you don't have to stake them, and I like that about them. I also like that they grow in part shade or full sun. 
Now these guys can self seed. So if you want these uh, to spread around your garden, they are a self seeder. Uh, but if you don't want that deadhead them, you might still have some seeding going on, but just know that they can spread. But I don't know that it's an aggressive spreader. Uh, maybe in the very right circumstances it can be, but just know it can spread. So if you don't want that, don't plant this. Rigium is my next one. And I tried growing this a couple different times. I tried it from seed. I tried it from some transplants that I got from another nursery, not this one. And I discovered this one from Hoffie's Nursery probably four years ago. And oh my goodness, this thing is fabulous. And if you want to plant a contrast color together, plant this with that Maltese cross that I just showed you. Put the two together because the flowers on this are like this electric blue. They are so bright and like in your face and they like glow. They're so awesome. So now I like to grow this one all the time, but I only use the cultivar Big Blue. It's the one that I've had the most success with. And in my opinion, it is the one that is the most spectacular. It has this beautiful mounding habit to it and the flowers grow up through it. You get a lot of flowers, blooms a super long time, grows in zone five through nine absolutely beautiful. So if you've ever wanted to grow one of these and you've struggled, I would try the big blue. All right, let's see if I can say this next one. I think it's Onothera Missouriensis. Missourienthus. I don't know. But anyways, there it is right there. This is a really nice one that you can use as a ground cover as well. And I don't see a lot of people planting this. Now there are other Orantherias out there, but I would highly recommend that you only use the Missourianthus if you don't want it to spread all over the place. This one is a ground cover, but it is got a nice, neat, well-behaved habit. So it does spread by seeding. So you can slow some of that down by cutting it back. But they'll say when you go and read about it, that it's you know, it doesn't take over anywhere. Or at least we hope that it doesn't. Uh, but I'll give you that caution just in case it is a spreader and it spreads by seed. I think the further south you go with this into zone seven and eight, that might be where you see more spreading. I think as far as being well behaved, you're going to see that more in zone five. So I can't speak to the other zones. But if any of you have grown this and you know, leave your comments below because we would love to not have somebody plant something that takes over their life. But this is unusual. People don't really grow it, and I thought I would talk about it. I think another one that people don't plant a lot is a trellis, and I like this because it grows in part shade and it grows in sun. I like just two of the cultivars they have, even though there's more of them. These are the two that I've planted. I have them at my garden show all the time, and they always sell out. They are fabulous, and I don't know that a lot of people plant them. They are great on the edge of the woods because they can handle shade. I know there's not a really lot of great, great blooming flowers that will handle so much shade. Now in this picture, this flower looks kind of like an apricot peach, but they're really like this really soft, delicate yellow. They kind of make me think of a cross between a ranunculus and an anemone because they are very paper-like and very fragile and beautiful, but they're strong. So I love this flower. Now here you can see they look more yellow and they're rising up above the foliage and the foliage is this really super dark green. So if you can plant this with maybe some chartreuse hostas behind it to highlight the foliage, that would look really, really good. They're also rabbit resistant. So if you have rabbits, yeah, they won't eat this. All right, the next one is also a trollus chinensis. Chinensis, something like that. Anyways, this one is the Golden Queen and it does have a nice, sturdy, strong stem. It's got a deeper yellow. I always think the name should be reversed that this one should be the cheddar and the other one should be the golden queen because I think of this one and I look at it and I go it's so the color of cheddar cheese and I always get them mixed up but these are both great flowers and you can plant them together because they look good together because the two yellows actually blend well when you put them like intermingle every other one or one in the back and one in the front. So the golden queen gets a little bit taller than the cheddar. So this one would be better in the back of the border, but you can intermingle them. I think that these are so beautiful and they have a really super long bloom time on them and they look great. Like on the edge of the woods would be a good place to put them. Or if you have dappled shade, that would be a great place to put these. So if you've never grown one of these, I would highly recommend trying one because they're gorgeous. In mass are a great big grouping of these looks fabulous. Fabulous. And I see, I think if you intermingle the two, I think that looks even better. So I love this plant. All right. The last one on my list is a grass. It's a Cesslaria autumnalis. I think I, I, I could be saying all of these wrong, but you know what? I give it a good try. Anyways, this is an autumn more grass. And I like this grass because it will take a little bit of shade. Now, not a lot of shade, but it will take a little bit of shade. 
and it's a warm season grass. So it starts to grow when it gets warm out and it doesn't get its little tufty plumes on there until more like August or September. And this guy is really hardy, sturdy, a great little bitty grass in the front of the border. Or if you want to create little tufts of grass someplace, this one is great. They're not very big, topping out at around two feet, and that's once they get their plumes on them, and they're only about 18 inches wide. So I like this one, and I love to blend it with different things. I like to create groupings of them. I'll put them like back and forward in a bed on the edge of the border. It's such a nice grass. All right, so now that we're at the end of the video, I have a question for all of you guys, and it was a suggestion that was sent in by Cindy Bunker, 4918. And she would like me to do a series of videos on what would Michelle do? Now, the one thing I can't get into is doing individual designs for people. There's no way I could manage that um, with running a garden center, doing designs uh, on my own for my landscaping customers and just in general making videos. There's no way I could fit that in. Plus, I don't know the circumstances of where everybody lives. But if I could create a video of different circumstances, like what would I do in this case where it's heavy clay or it's up against a wall or just different circumstances, would you guys like videos like that? Because I think that would be how I'd have to do them so that it would be more uh, broad information for individual peoples to use as the situations or circumstances dictate for them. So let me know down in the comments whether or not that's something you want me to do. Wasn't that a fun thing to look at all those different perennials that maybe you've never heard of before? Maybe you want to try some of them in your garden. And if you don't, it's still fun to look at the different perennials that are out there. I love to explore and test different ones in my garden. I have areas in my garden where I'm always testing different things. And then if I love it, I add it to my garden. And if I don't love it, then I just get rid of it. But I'll tell you, it's a great thing to learn more knowledge about different things that you can plant out there. I hope that you enjoyed our video. And again, I will make the listing available for purchase, but not until May. I want to make sure that the crops all succeed because you know what? Growers have crop failure sometimes and then the plant's not available. So I don't want to under promise or over promise and under deliver. So I'll make that available in May. And when we get closer to that date, I'll put a video out. That way you guys, if you want to try them, you'll have the ability to be able to find the plants, but you never know. You might be able to call your garden center where you live and get them to order them for you. They might have access to a grower who grows some of these plants. So I hope this was informative, I hope it was enjoyable, and I hope you are ready to go out and garden, even though it's January, well, you can plant some seeds. Anyways, I'm Michelle. Talk to you guys later.